Lynched on CTV. Proudly brought to you by Christchurch's number one dining offer, Sequoia 88 at the Redwood Hotel. A food concept unequalled. Good evening to you. They're two of the most important areas in Canterbury, growing in population and contributing to the wealth of this country. But what are the challenges facing the Waimakariri and Selwyn districts? Well, tonight, the Emirs join me and Lynched starts right now. Well, sometimes it's important to leave Christchurch, isn't it? Good evening to you. It's Chris Lynch here with Lynched. Well, the Waimakariri District Mayor David Ayres and Selwyn District Council Mayor Calvin Coe are my guests tonight. We've left Christchurch behind. What a nice feeling it is. And good evening to you, gentlemen. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, Chris. Tinder dry conditions at the moment, probably the worst you've probably seen in many years. Calvin, let me start with you. Um, Rolleston, yet another um, fire that was raging out of control momentarily this afternoon. What on earth is going on, do you think? Well, it's just the fact that it is so dry and there's still quite a bit of fuel around on, in the drier areas and uh, we've certainly had our fire at Flock Hill the other week and mm. uh, now we've got this one at Rolleston today but they're getting onto it very quickly they had the helicopters in the air very quickly today and they had it under control within a pretty quick period of time so we were pretty pleased with that outcome not that it's not frightening for everybody yeah. involved out there it's been it seems like it's been drier than usual David is, is that a fair comment or is it just the fact that we're reporting more on some of these fires that are affecting some of the major arterials around your your regions well, I think it's certainly drier than it's been for some summers, but it, it's probably a fairly typical Canterbury pattern. We do get our dry periods, and uh, but you're right, the, it, it's tinted dry at the moment. Um, we've got a, a compost fire from a couple of weeks ago in Bird Hill area to south of Oxford, still burning, causing great distress to the locals there. It's, it's still smoke, burning? It's still burning, yes. Isn't yeah. it remarkable that a compost mm. fire can still burn, but it's because yeah. what it's so deep they can't actually get to it and it just relights by itself? Yes, well it spontaneously combusts and then um, it becomes dangerous to open it up because that would actually could make the fire worse and could spread. Yeah. I do want to acknowledge in both your areas that you've got fantastic volunteer fire service men and women Absolutely. that not only are dealing with fires but also uh, car crashes and to be fair there seems to be like there's been quite a few in both your regions lately so I think it's important on the show tonight to acknowledge them. They do a wonderful job don't they? Well, yeah. Gone. Well, not only the fire, local fire brigades and Waimakariri, we've got uh, five of them, but we also have three rural fire parties as well. So, and then, you know, crews come from across the borders. I mean, the, the one near Oxford uh, crew came from Springfield or Darfield, or something like that. So that that goes on all the time. Mm. You were going to say? And Selwyn is sim similar. We have the, the rural fire brigades and all volunteers, and uh, you know they put in a terrific effort. And the ones that are based near a state highway, you're right, they deal with a lot of car accidents, and some of our busiest stations are the ones that that are actually service the state highways as well. And what I think it's important to remind people tonight is that uh, you know often people think it's the ambulance first on the scene, but more often than not, it's not actually. The first responders are the firemen and women having to pull out these people from mangled cars. Is it just me, Calvin, or, or does there seem to be more car crashes around that Rolleston area than ever before? What on earth is yeah, going on? I, th I think there has been, but remember the volume of traffic has grown significantly too. And if you think about our accidents, you've got to differentiate between the state highway and, and the other rural roads. Mm. And the state highway, when we get the uh, motorway coming out towards Rolleston, I think that will sort of cut down a lot of those accidents on the state highway. And of course we have a lot of intersections on our flat land, which mm. is another a contributor to accidents. You think you've got enough, not roads, but are the roads suitable then enough for the, the booming residential areas of Rolleston for argument's sake, or is that just a, a too much of an easy, simplistic argument to well, present to you? Well, we're having to upgrade our roads, and with the increased traffic volumes, putting in left-hand turning bays, right-hand turning bays, things like this, which, mm. would, which will accommodate that higher traffic flows that we're guessing. seeing. I do want to come back to traffic later on in the programme, because as you know, it's a, it's a big issue for probably uh, your residents, but I want to turn our attention now to the local government acts, and it was interesting, because off-camera you were sort of saying, well, what? doesn't really really apply to us. But uh, Leanne well, Delzell... Certainly it certainly applies well, well, to us. Well, it does apply to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying you can't just... Like, forget no, the... No. You know, but you know what I mean. Uh, what I guess I'm saying is you don't have perhaps the similar frustrations that Christchurch Council does. But Leanne Delzell said once, one of her frustrations as Mayor was discovering how incredibly restrictive the Local Government Act was on Council's decision-making abilities, especially in the recovery situation. Do you experience that too? 
or is it business as usual for you? Are you still being able to get on with things, or is that just a blimmin' excuse? I don't think it's an excuse. I mean, I don't know what Leanne's experience is that, that is the background to that. I, I think if we hadn't had the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Act, we would have found the Resource Management Act very um, restricting, uh, and certainly that has helped speed things up. As you know, we've had a lot of damage in, in our district, particularly mm. around the Kaipo area, and, uh, and so that has helped. The Local Government Act, um, while it does put it, you know, there are processes that you have to go through, particularly if it's a, defined as a matter of significance, um, it's actually all about consulting and engaging your community, so you really can't argue with that. Mm. What people often forget, including myself at some points, that Kaipo was badly hit in the September quake. Mm. I remember reporting on that as a, as a producer for the close-up program. We were down there as with Campbell Live. That was that was a pretty powerful shake for the Kaipo, Kaipo region. And now it's it's quite odd to think that most of those houses, if not all, are now gone, aren't they? About, some of those red zone areas that were really badly hit. Yes, more than 22% of Kaipo has been uh, red zoned, and there are not many houses left now. So that made a significant difference to to Kaipo. And uh, but having said that, around about six, well, over 60 per cent of the people red zoned in Kaipoi stayed in Kaipoi or very close. Now uh, that's interesting. Mm. Why is that? Because they had every opportunity to go, excuse the language, bugger it, I'm out of here, as did many Christchurch people as well. I think, um, I think we've seen it in Christchurch too. There, there are strong communities out there and people mm. like to stay close to their friends, they, they like their kids to stay at the same school. Um, they might be in the local rugby club or whatever they, whatever ties them into a community is really important to them. And uh, and so uh, Kaipoi people said right off, right from the word go that they wanted to, wanted to stay in Kaipoi. Many of them found houses within Kaipoi, um, in older houses, or uh, they moved into the new subdivisions around the edge. In terms of Selwyn, I mean Selwyn was hit, but perhaps in comparison to other areas of Christchurch and Waimakariri. Not so bad though, I understand most of your, your major infrastructure was fixed about mid last year, is that right? Yes, um, we didn't suffer the same infrastructure damage, but we did, our residents did suffer from the house, house damage. But the mm. difference, one of the differences is we have no red zones. We have TC2 and TC3 land, but they haven't been red zoned because you're able to rebuild perhaps in a different location on that same site. So that is one difference. And just thinking of your comment from the end there before, the fact that they have a Sarah managing the central business area as separate from Christchurch City is, is something different that we haven't had to, to cope with. And I'm guessing a good thing perhaps when you read the press? Oh, I, I think the, <laughs> Tell us what you really think. I don't really want to comment too much on Christchurch really, but I, but I, I think it's a difficult space for the Christchurch City Council to be in when the central city is not being planned for along with the rest of the city in the, in the same way and, and they're, they're working on their district plan and that mm. must make it very difficult for them I would, I, I would think. I, often wonder, I wouldn't like it to happen in central Rangiora or central Carboy. Mm. Mm. I often wonder whether the central city of Christchurch would have been better off being allowed to have grown organically but that's a, perhaps a discussion another time. Philosophical we'll view. <laughs> yeah, philosophical <laughs> view, exactly. Need to take a break. There is so much to discuss. Uh, I want to come back to the transport issues, the population booms, and uh, some exciting developments for both regions. Do stay with us. Welcome back to Lynch on CDV. My guests tonight are Waimakariri District Mayor David Ears and Selwyn's Mayor Calvin Coe. Calvin, let me start with you. A uh, bit of a boom to say the, the least, I suppose, in terms of population for the Selwyn area. What are, you, what are you putting that down to? Is it just a matter of the, the, the a lot of parts, particularly near Rolleston, are subdividing or what? And well, why is it that a lot of people are moving to your district, so to speak? Well, I mean, we could just say, you know, it's a great place, but if you before the earthquakes, we had quite a high growth rate already. And so we had a lot of the planning done to cater for future growth. And so once following the earthquake, we were at a bit of an advantage over Christchurch and WIMAC and that we could just continue with the urban development strategy pretty much as it was, whereas you guys had to change your plans a wee bit. No, no, we don't. You didn't? <laughs> OK. <laughs> in terms of the issues that you face in the WIMAC, though, I mean, the population out your way too is increasing. And mm. that is, and we're seeing, for better or worse, the bad results of that when it comes to traffic. And a lot of people are saying um, that, have you planned for that though? Have you planned for, it's all very well to allow development, but what mm. about the infrastructure that goes with that? What is your response to, and you're probably aware of those sort of critics you hear yes. all the time. Yes. 
Um, the planning is, was in place and it is in place and it is happening. I think the earthquake threw a spanner in the works and not so much the earthquake as, as the red zoning decisions which mm -hmm. forced people out of part, large that parts of Christchurch. Mm. And the, uh, what happened was that uh, road motorway planning and, and, and roads like John's Road and um, being widened and so on were, um, were being planned for but the earthquake um, accelerated the need for them and, uh, and that's been the, been the real issue. As far as other infrastructure was concerned, we, uh, water, sewer and so on, um, was already there for to cope with uh, the increased growth. So, um, yeah, we did have the planning in place. There was some couple of subdivisions around Kaipoi that were accelerated because of the uh, earthquake, mm. but uh, around Rangiora, for instance, it's all been uh, all planned for and, and anticipated. Mm. I, I suppose it's very easy for local Christchurch City Councils to poke fun at your districts. Um, Councillor Raf Manji, in a way, I suppose it wasn't really poking fun, but he, he's spoken of the need for a strong rail link stretching from Ashburton to Amberley. Are you having any of these types of discussions? I mean, there was discussions of light rail. In fact, when, when has there not been discussions of light rail for both? Your, your districts to come to Christchurch. I mean, is there any talk of that or is that just a complete gone at no-go zone now? Don't have the money, you ain't got the population. David? It, it wasn't going to work to do a short-term fix for the motorway congestion by putting in rail. It, we didn't... Because you've got to get people out of their cars. Well, and also, and and also you've got, there was some infrastructure that had to be built and you know, there's no railway station in Carpoy, for instance, these days and, um, and there's similar issues in, in Christchurch. Uh, and the rolling stock wasn't all that available, you know, questions like that. But I think that rail has always been on the agenda uh, and I personally believe it will happen. Uh, whether, whether it's Amberley to Ashburton or Rangiora to Rolleston, who knows. Uh, but so I, who I could, think it will happen. But yeah. is there any kind of wider agency now that's looking at this or is that, or, or is that just called ECAN, Calvin? What do you know? What do you no, see? No. What do you one, of the, one of the things, so the issues you raise, is, is an, an independent transport authority which would take over the roles of ECAN, Christchurch, uh, Waymac and Selwyn now. That at the moment is focused principally on the bus routes and I think there's a, a, a critical mass of population you need before you would go down the train route. And in the meantime, though, I think the priority is to get our bus system running as, be as, as best we possibly mm. can. And I think we're doing a good job in doing that, but having, having an independent authority would probably ease that and make it a little bit better. The difficulty we have, though, don't we, is that at the end of the day, we love our cars. And would people, you know, park their car at the railway station, get on the train to come to Christchurch for work and vice versa? I'm not entirely convinced they would. It's a whole mindset, it's a cultural shift in the way we think, isn't it? Mm. And do, do you think we really have it in us as cantabs to go down that road, or is this just always nice to have the argument and the debate about whether or not we should ever get light rail, or even in fact increase the bus routes, you know? What do you reckon? I think it's important that whatever public transport you have, that it's more attractive than being in your car. And if, if, it's, if it works, if it's faster, if it's uh, comfortable, people will, will go to it. it it's, uh, um, it is quite a big ask, I, I, I agree, and maybe a lot of the people who want public transport want other people to go on the public transport rather than themselves, but it's, I think that for the future of Greater Christchurch we actually have to have a really good public transport system. So yeah. talk to me then, is there any moves afoot then to create some kind of wider Christchurch group agency to look at these issues right now? Is there anything that that you guys are working on? Is anything that other yes, councils... Those, Tell me about those that. Those proposals have been put up. We haven't mm. got to any any fine print or anything, mm. but the principle of having an independent transport authority is being discussed at the moment. Mm. Uh, and what form or shape that would take uh, is, is, is one of the questions that will be asked and has to be analysed. And the other, the other thing that's happening or about to happen is that the review of ECAN will, will, will come into the public and, and, and therefore the functions of ECAN will be up for public discussion. So, that's, uh, uh, so that brings up the whole question of control of public transport. Well, I'm glad you brought up ECAN. That was one of my other questions to ask then. Mm. Um, has this organisation performed better under commissioners? Was it entirely necessary, David? Uh, yeah, that's looking back and it's asking us to put, put history forward really. But uh, the ECAN commissioners I think have done a good job. I, um, I don't want commissioners there forever, either, how mm. I will say that. So you are for some kind of t uh, return to democracy. Last I read in the press that 
you were in favour of this, but perhaps, um, correct me if I'm wrong, some kind of mixed model, so it wasn't a kind of a, right, they're gone, let's bring in some people mm. who've voted in with absolutely no experience whatsoever. Personally, I would, would support a mixed model only for one term, so very basically short term. I think that in the end, who, well, it's no taxation without representation, really, and, and mm. the ECAN is a rating body, and, uh, and people should have a say at how, them, how their money is being spent. Calvin, what do you see in what ECAN's done, and, what do, you, and do you want a full return to democracy? Do you want a partial? What are your thoughts? I'll just come back to your first question. Yes, I think the commissioners have done a good job. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I'd like to see it go back to full, full democracy, but the, the transition is the issue. How do, we don't want to really lose the experience of the last maybe five, six years, um, uh, and have all that experience lost. So how do you manage that transition and make sure you get a smooth change over to democracy? That's the issue I think that's being focused on now. So we're both in agreement that perhaps the best way forward, and I hate using that expression, is some kind of mixed representation of commissioners at the end, some that, local representation, until we've got enough confidence that who we've got in there is effective enough to do the job and do the job well. well I don't think it's about a it's a question of confidence in the people who are there because in, in the end um, you have to trust the voters mm. and, uh, and sometimes you don't agree with what the voters do and sometimes you do and, that, and that's, that's, that's democracy. Um, but the, it's not so much about a question of trust, it's, I think as Kelvin says, not, not throwing away the experience of the last mm. five or six years and I mean I would see a mixed model would still have a majority of elected members there. Um, it's, it's about getting a balance also within the um, ECAN or whatever replaces it. I, I, the other thing I would say, I think it's really important that we do have a regional body for the whole of Canterbury, uh, stretching from Kaikoura through to Waimati. Mm. Do we have that at the moment though in the form of ECAN? Or is yes. It? yes, we do. Yes. Mm. All right. Need to take a break. When we come back, um, your ear is looking hopeful though. I want to discuss the hope and what your predictions are. I want you to get out the crystal ball and look ahead to 2015. Mm. Stay with us. Welcome back to Lynched on CDV. My guests tonight are Waimakariri District Mayor David Ears and Selwyn's Mayor uh, Calvin Coe. Calvin, let me start with you. Uh, you've been pretty lucky in terms of no red zone areas, but you've still had your sense of troubles trying to get some parts of uh, what you represent over the line. In terms of prediction for 2015, what's happening in Selwyn's Way? And I was saying to you off air that I was really impressed with your, your website enticing people to come to the Southern District because you've got so much going on, more than fact to be honest with you, that I knew about in terms of the areas that you actually represent. So here's your free plug. So what are we going to see in the next 15 yeah. years in Selwyn? I think the biggest project we have on the go at the moment, which is not a council project, but which is the Central Plains Water, that's going to make a huge difference to the rural community in Selwyn and when, it, when the water starts flowing from that, which they expect to do uh, in the summer end of this year. Is it that soon summer, now? Yes, Gee, for the first stage fast, one. For stage one, but we're also seeing the continued development uh, of subdivisions. We're hopefully going to see the start of the motorway coming up uh, before then. It won't reach out to Selwyn or out to Rolleston uh, in that period, but we'll see a start to that. Uh, we've also got, um, but the uh, the rural areas because remember that following the earthquake, there's been a lot of time and effort and planning going into supporting the growth that we're seeing in what we call the inner plains, those closer in townships, mm -hmm. but we still have all the rural areas to service as well and we have to go back and start thinking about the zoning requirements and what, what they need to actually sustain them and allow them to grow as well. So we'll be looking at that rural area as well. We've got a project in Southbridge to upgrade mm -hmm. their swimming pool coming up uh, in this, mm -hmm. this year, which, which is Good to see. Yeah, amazing how much people actually need the swimming pools. David, you may know of a gentleman called Hugh Pavlich. He's an urban planner. Mm. He always um, uses the Waimakariri district as the poster child of how to get on with it and rebuild and how to get things done in terms of consents. How do you do it then? Are you aware of the fact that he, you know... No, I wasn't, well, aware. I wasn't, aware, I wasn't aware that he was saying that. No. Well, very nice I, I, things. I, I have he looks to the, mm. the fact that the Waimakariri district has the ability to get the consents right, they're building fast, they're getting it on time, and he uses mm. that as an excuse for how Christchurch could do it. Is it simply because you're smaller, or is it simply because you have better staff, or what is it, do you think? We're a large middle authority. You know, We're actually the third largest um, district on the South Island, so we're not that small, but I think our size does possibly make us uh, flexible, and, and perhaps faster on your feet at times. Uh, we 
we anticipated the growth, so we upped our building consent capacity um, before it happened. In fact, we were a bit worried that it wasn't going to happen and we had too many staff, but it, it, it did happen. And, uh, and we've got a very good staff. And, and, uh, and I think probably our district plan uh, works well for, for, for growth. Uh, but it's growth tempered by awareness of the importance of the environment. And, and we, if you ask me about my vision, it, it, I mean, apart from the infrastructure things like roads and so on, which are mostly on the Christchurch side of the Waimakariri rather than, than on our side. Um, and they dump uh, the roads, they dump the cars only on the, the Christchurch side too, in the Waimak yeah, River, don't of they? Of course, yes. <laughs> but I, I, to me, it, it, what's the real challenge for us is social, that we've got uh, long established towns in, in, in Rangiora, Kaipoi, Woody and Oxford, mm. and a new one in Pegasus. A lot of new people in is actually developing strong communities in those in mm. those um, communities in, in those towns and and in the surrounding rural areas, and that's uh, um, really important so that people uh, feel they belong to whether it's Kaipoi or Wood End or wherever. Mm. I'll tell you uh, the f the feedback I got on Facebook, which was largely positive, but mm. some of the criticism that came in from uh, people who live in both your districts was they do get a they get worried that the sense of charm in some of the smaller rural Canterbury mm. communities will eventually go with new subdivisions and the cookie cutter houses. Mm. That is a real concern for them. You must have thought about that too. And I'm not meaning yes. you like Pegasus because it looks great. I mean, but you know what I mean? There is that sense mm. that, oh, is part of some of our um, rural lifestyle factor that made, that made us so special. Is, it, is the edge being rubbed off a bit by the, these cookie cutter developments, do you think? Or, or, do, or yeah, at the end well, of the day, or do the pros outweigh people, the cons? People have actually been saying that for a long time, well before the earthquake, but of course with, right. the, with the accelerated growth since the red zoning, that has become more more obvious to people. And I, and I think that comes back to what I said before, is, is actually building that sense of community around our towns. And I mean, I can I live right in the middle of Rangiora. I can mm. walk to the edge of Rangiora within about 20 minutes. So I mean, the, the country is still not that far away. Mm. And uh, and the same applies to Kaiapoi and, and the like. And I think the other thing is we tried very hard to do is is spread our growth around so that some of it's, you know, lots in Kaiapoi would end, not much, but it's going to happen fairly soon. Uh, Rangiora, um, Oxford's been growing, you know, and, and, and by having that growth spread around the district, you actually uh, contribute to that sense of community. I Nearly think. out of time, but I want to talk to you just briefly about um, politics in terms of your local MPs. I know you've got Amy Adams out there, won the election with a hands down in your in your area. The same for National in terms of Matthew Ducey, I want to come mm -hmm. to him shortly. We're in two electorates, we've got Kaikoura as well. Oh, of course. North of the actually. Yeah. Yes, um, Amy Adams, do you have a good, does the council have a good relationship with this government with Amy Adams? Yeah, we certainly do. I mean, now that mm -hmm. she's become a minister, we perhaps see her less often, but she's mm -hmm. certainly, we can communicate her with her any time. I like Amy. Whatever, yeah. so we Straight keep, shooter, yeah. and she'll tell you if you can get it done. She'll tell you if you won't. I like that about her. And, uh, Haven't heard much um, media-wise, and perhaps you know that's a fault of perhaps me and Matthew Ducey. Matthew Ducey, what's he doing? That, that was a bit of a surprise, I think, for some political commentators. Perhaps not for you, David. Oh, I'm, I'm neutral. I didn't predict, but um, <laughs> Matt's, Matt's working hard. Um, I think we've been lucky. We've. Uh, because Clayton Cosgrove has based himself in Waimakariri, so we've had um, two MPs, I like to think, and uh, mm. uh, Stuart Smith is new MP for the Kaikoura electorate north of, uh, north of the Ashley River. Um, they're all hard-working MPs, and, uh, mm. uh, and that's uh, um, all to our benefit. And, and Kate Wilkinson, before Matt, was likewise hard-working. Mm. Well, a time. Mm. Lovely to meet both of you. Mm. It's gone far too fast. Kelvin and Cohen. Thanks for coming in, and David Ears, Chris. all the very best for your regions. That is our show. Gee, it's gone fast, hasn't it? Please do join me on my Facebook page. And of course, I'm back on News Talks. It'll be tomorrow from 8.30. You have a great night. Lynched on CTV, proudly brought to you by Christchurch's number one dining offer, Sequoia 88 at the Redwood Hotel, a food concept unequalled.